Like a lot of species in Australia, fire is crucial for its germination and its survival. This Hibertia required fire to germinate and part of its management was to reintroduce a fire regime to this area. This area was burned about three years ago and you can see that it's really recovered and the vegetation has become very dense. And the good news is, is that the Hibertia responded really well with some great numbers of seedlings coming through. We're about to jump over the other side, which has been unburnt and you'll see the difference in the vegetation. So fire is a big management challenge because you know we can't burn around people's houses. Yeah, we're and, surrounded. <laughs> and the Australian bush needs it so much. Yeah, the, um, a lot of plants are called obligate seeders as well. They won't seed unless they have fire or they won't germinate unless they have fire. One of the really interesting things I wanted to show you is this area is quite open because it hasn't been burned. This is the right? unburnt side, yeah. Compared to that side. There I, they looked the same five years ago. Yeah, so this one's a, a, what we think is a parent plant, and as you can see, it's a lot bigger than the ones it, we were looking it at It looks before. really different. You can actually see the, the changes in colour, mm -hmm. the, um, those terminal points of the branchlets. Yeah, they're, the new growth's red in colour, and the um, flowers come out of the nodes here as well. I, the point I wanted to make was it's a pretty obscure plant, and although this has been surveyed a lot, we'd never noticed it before. Yeah, We'd just walk straight past oh, it. <laughs> it's easier to do it with a plant like this. Yeah, exactly. As an obligate seeder, uh, it needs fire to germinate. So we know that this area hasn't been burnt for 50 years. Estimated 50 years. So the question is, did this germinate 50 years ago? And is this as big as the plant gets? We've actually got another couple of plants up here that I want to show you that are almost two metres across. Yeah, right. And I believe they're 50 years old. This one's a bit of a mystery. Once again, we don't know if they're all the same plant and they're actually four metres across or if they're three or four separate individuals. Something else we don't know about it. <laughs> yeah, well, plenty of questions still. Yeah. We've classified it as three separate individuals, but it could just as easily be one individual. These plants here are estimated at over 50 years old based on when the last burn occurred. And if you have a look, in here, you see how thick and gnarled yeah, it is. Wow. Isn't it amazing? Yes. Yeah, Which kind of lends support to the idea that, yeah. How old it is. It is a really old little shrublet, we call them. Shrublets. A shrublet, a mini, a mini shrub. <laughs> <laughs> yep. This Herbertia is called Herbertia aspera. It isn't actually the same as the one we're looking at, but it has this classic five petal structure with these lobed petals. Most herbertias are classified based on that flower structure. So we're taking leaf specimens from other herbertia and we're going to do the genetics on them as well and make sure that they're not inbreeding with herbertia spinantha and that we indeed do have a pure species. So we've got four populations of this species. The population that occurs in the, the Hornsby local government area doesn't really set seed. Um, we haven't seen any seedlings there. That's a real mystery, and that's why we have our ex situ collection here. Whereas the population in the Karingai council area, that does set seed, and those seeds have been collected to try and figure out how to get them to germinate. It's an insurance population, in case anything happens to our wild plants. Mm. And then um, Mary and Ingrid have been helping look after them. Ingrid, who had actually seen the species at the previous population, had then had the experience of finding it and being the first person to actually see it in flower. We parked the car and I just had to look around and there was a yellow flower and I thought, <laughs> oh, that could be the Hibertia. And so I showed it to my husband and he agreed it was the same. And yeah, it's pretty special. That was really exciting. Yeah. What's it been like for you working with the species? very exciting and challenging being part of a scientific experiment that has profound interest to anybody who's interested in preserving native plants and trying to make sure that they go on in the world long after we're all gone. Every single one of these plants is genetically identical. They're, they're clones because they're from cuttings. So the problem we've got with the, the wild populations is they're not setting seed. It might be because there's not pollinators or it might be because they're too closely related, or it might be because they need fire. That's something that we're trying to find out. So we've tried in the nursery to see if they'll set seed on, on successfully to date. So what we thought we'd try is we'd put them on a trolley and park them when they're in full flower next to their native stingless bee nest out in another part of the nursery. And we thought, well, they need buzz pollination and the native bees do the buzz pollination, but unfortunately it didn't come to fruition. We have three seeds 
from this population. And that's all we know about. Three. And we're still to work out what's the key to, to break that dormancy and to get them to germinate. You only get one chance. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Once you've tried, they're, they're gone. Thanks for watching EnviroTube and I'll see you next time.